Okay, so this sounds pretty good. We've got a reasonably simple geometric thing. Everything goes in circles at different speeds. I mean, that's still a bit complicated. We have to say, why circles? Why different speeds? Why forwards? But nonetheless, it's a hell of a lot more complicated than the turns back every Thursday type explanations we had before. Yep. But does it give a perfect measurement of where things are going to be? Well, I think this is the question, right? If they, if it is perfectly explained, you should always know exactly where it is and where it is in the sky. And there are people who have done this and, you know, can even 500 years ago, like Taco Bray, who knew exactly where these things were going to appear. And it wasn't exactly matching up. That's right. I mean, a lot of people think of scientific theory sort of arm wavingly. This works pretty well. It explains why they go backwards sometimes. But you want to do better than that for That's a real right. scientific theory. You want to say precisely it's going to be at this position of the sky on this time. And you want it, you know, you don't want to say it's there. Oh, it's, it's over there. It's close enough. It needs to be there at the second. That's right. And we had very accurate measurements, as you say. Tycho Brahe um, in his uh, Uraniborg Observatory in what's now Denmark had made very accurate measurements of where the different planets yeah. were at different times. Here's, here's a picture of his observatory. So you, you basically wanted very big pillars with graded scales so you could line up your eye and say, OK, it's just past the top of that pillar at this time. Yep. And you did, well, they didn't really have clocks, but they had some sorts of clocks. And it was all quite difficult, but they were able to make very accurate measurements. And this model that Copernicus came up with, everything going around the sun, did pretty well. It roughly explained what was going on, but, but not was, precisely. That's right. It was a little bit off. Yeah. Now you could, whereas some of the previous ad hoc, you know, on Thursday, it's over there, because they could just add more ad hocness. <laughs> that's right. That's, no, 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 no. I didn't mean on the fourth Thursday followed by the second Wednesday. Yeah. But every fourth month you add 20s to this and then take five off on the second month. Of it. You, you can come up with a rule that fits it very accurately. And, and that's, and that's how some of done. the rules were created. They just kept adding more and more and more. So, on one hand, this new theory was very elegant and simple, but it didn't do as well as the old ad hoc rules. And there wasn't just an inclination to add, oh, but we'll, we'll add a five here, and on Wednesday it works there. They wanted it to work one rule for all. But eventually they figured out a way to make this model work better, which is that instead of having the planets in perfectly circular orbits, they put them in an elliptical orbit. Now, okay. an ellipse is, instead of a perfect circle, it's like a squashed circle. So... But you can squash it in any shape, right? I mean, what, when we say ellipse, it's, you know, squashing it a little bit versus squashing it a lot. All and in ellipses. these cases, it's only squashed very little. Okay. So, for example, these two diagrams, one is a perfect circle, and one is the orbit of the Earth around the sun. Now, can you tell me which of these is the perfect circle and which is an ellipse? Uh, I feel you're playing a joke on me that these are actually both circles. Um, you, I'll... Well, let's go blue. Earth is blue, why not? Damn, you figured it out. Yes. In <laughs> fact, that is an ellipse, and this is a perfect circle. Um, if I plop them on top of each other, can you see the difference now? Mm, kind of? It's, it's not dramatic. Again, I think sometimes we have this view that it's egg shape almost, but this... Again, it's almost a perfect circle, but it's not... Perfect, right? Yeah, and often people think that because it's a squashed uh, an ellipse, that's why we get seasons, why it's hot sometime of the year yes. and not. But in fact, no. it's pretty damn close to being a circle. Here I've actually done a simulation of the two perfect circle and moving, the Earth moving as it actually does around the sun. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's... It gets, it gets a little bit ahead sometimes. And, and so it's something where I guess the differences are, you wouldn't notice the dramatic where you say, you know, Mars is going to rise at 10 p.m. and it rises at 1 a.m. It's Mars rises at 10 p.m. It, it rose at 10, 10, so it's a little bit off, but it's still pretty close. That's right. And so if we put these things in elliptical orbits, it actually does an extremely good job of fitting the data. Ah, OK. Um, so good that it uh, beat the pants off. Finally, you could beat the pants off the old ad hoc rules. So it's made our model a bit more complicated. We've got everything going around the sun in elliptical yeah. orbits, not perfectly circular orbits, but they're pretty close to circular. And the small change yep. in the shape gives you a really good fit to what's going on. So, well, I mean, that's great, right? I mean, we have this somewhat elegant solution that is also pretty simple. Had to change a few views of our world. But I guess now we have to figuring out and understand why is it behaving this way? Why is it elliptical, not a perfect circle? You know, wh and why is it just slightly elliptical? Yeah, so it's, it's a better theory, but it's not, still not great because no. we've had to say, we had to make up 
Previously, we had a whole bunch of rules, like on Thursday, it moves this way. Now we've got a whole bunch of rules. They go in slightly elliptical orbits, and that the, the speed goes down as you go out. Um, These are you. Copernicus, Kepler's laws of motion, That's right. people will often learn at school. And they're still pretty arbitrary. You've got a, not as many rules as you had before. You're getting away with only three or four rules rather than 20 or 30 you had before. So it's an improvement, but it's not great. And we'd really like to know why. Why do things move in ellipses that are almost circles around the sun? Yeah, there has to be a reason. So I guess in order to understand that, we actually have to understand... The, the physics and science of how things behave in space, right? Okay, so I think we'll take a, di a digression from our solar system and spend the next few videos talking about what the laws of motion and behavior and physics in space, like is there air in space, is there gravity in yeah. space, because we're going to need to understand these yes. things for the rest of this course on planets. That's right.